This is a continuation of the laser beam uh, tutorial I did. Uh, last time it was kind of like a particle system to make a laser. This time it's an actual beam that shoots out, tracks a spaceship, and destroys it and then comes back. Okay, so the nice thing about this is that the laser beam will uh, start at this base ship and follow this uh, target ship wherever it goes. But it also animates uh, doing so. It goes back and forth. It animates shooting out, and it animates coming back. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. Um, first thing, I will create a little laser object, laser beam object here. Okay. Go to, oops, wireframe mode. We'll create a little box. Come on, box. Okay. I'll kind of move to my side here, and I'll hit the right arrow a couple times uh, to give it a couple segments on the Z-axis here. All right. Hit enter when I'm done, and uh, I'll go to modify center, center it, and hit my tab key to turn on the sub patches. All right now, let's take this extra geometry in the middle here and uh, kind of stretch it out until it gets towards the ends here, and then stretch the whole thing together. Because what I want is a squat little tube like this that um, will keep the uh, end shapes like that. So that's why I add that extra geometry. So when it stretches out it doesn't become kind of like a mushroom shape. Okay, the other thing I need to do is add a texture to this. So I'll hit Q. I already have a laser texture set up. Q, chain surface, laser beam. Okay. I'll take a look at this uh, texture and show you what goes into making that. Um, so for example, let me bring up the, the original scene here. We'll take a look at the uh, laser texture here. So all I did was give it a red color, and I uh, cranked up the luminosity a bit, and then I uh, gave it a procedural texture. I just clicked on a little T and went to procedural texture, and uh, turbulence is fine. I cranked up the contrast a bit so that you could see it better, it's because I didn't want it to be just one blobby luminous shape, and so you know that's um, that's what it came out to be. Uh, and then the other thing was I went and changed the glow intensity to 100%. Also in the uh, processing tab up here, I turned on enable glow so that we can see the glow effect. All right, and so you can see when the laser shoots out, you can see the glow and whatnot here. So that's what it looks like. All right, so now how do we animate it uh, shooting out and tracking this uh, enemy spaceship? Let's create this, recreate this from scratch here. Let's uh, bring in our laser object. I hit plus on the keyboard. Laser beam. I'll bring in the laser beam. Okay, and I'll bring in the shuttle object, so I'll have something to track. So let's uh, animate the shuttle moving through space, so we'll know when the laser beam is actually correctly uh, tracking it. So we'll just animate this, move through the keyframes here, and kind of animate it doing a kind of a, a hoop thing here. All right, so now we have this this uh, object to track. So I'm going to animate this laser beam actually using bones, which may seem kind of something you would only use for characters, but it's going to be really useful for here. So let's add a bone to this object. Select the object, add a bone, and we'll move this bone into place. Oops. Shift R, not Shift H. Okay. Okay, and uh, I'm going to add a couple child bones here. Equal sign, add child bone. Move this into position. This bone will control the base. Keep the base of the laser beam steady. Select that parent bone again and equal sign, child bone. And this bone will, will control the tip. Okay. So I'm going to need to tell, uh, I'm going to need some weight maps to tell it which which vertices, um, which points make up the tip and which ones make up the base. So let's go back to our laser beam object. I'll go to wireframe mode. I'll select the points that make up the tip and click on this W for weight map and say new weight map, call it tip. Deselect. Select these points, new weight map, and call this base. So now we have the base and the tip. Uh, we have those weight maps created. So let's uh, activate these bones by hitting R. Okay. And now we'll go into the bone properties and set everything up correctly. All right, this top 
parent bone here uh, that controls the whole system uh, doesn't need to deform anything, so we'll turn bone active to off. This bone here, which controls the base, will set the bone weight map to base. And this one that controls the tip, uh, bone weight map equals tip. So now whenever I move this, the base stays still. And now wherever I move this, the laser beam will uh, track it. Okay. All right. So uh, the other thing is having this extra bone is nice because uh, when you scale, for example, if I wanted to scale the... Uh, the bones. If I if you scale the top bone in the hierarchy, all the bones, as you can see, scale with it. But uh, let's say I want, for example, this the tip of the laser to be very tapered off. I can scale these bones independently. Okay. So now I have a laser that has a fat base and a, a narrow tip. I might want that. Okay. So now we have our our bone set up, our laser set up, and uh, now I need to make this tip of this bone, this tip bone, track this uh, shuttle, and I needed to do it in a way that I can kind of automatically animate. So let's bring up the motion options for this bone, and the best way to do that is with a simple point constraints. You'll see it says point constraint, so you double click on that, and uh, I'll just add a point constraint. So as you can see, each channel can be constrained to a different object. But we want them all to be constrained to that shuttle, so we'll select the shuttle for all three of these. Okay, and the nice thing is that we can animate this using this weight. So we'll just click on the envelope for the weight. Uh, annoying thing is you can't, you have to close that panel first. So let's animate around frame 20. We want it to shoot out. Right now you can see that it's tracking the object already, but we want to animate that. So around frame 20 or so, so let's add some keyframes. It'll start tracking it around here, and then it'll go to frame 50 or so, and then it'll come back. Okay. So you have some keyframes. Let's select the uh, keyframe selection option. Uh, right click and drag to select some of these and start moving them down. All right. So we'll select these ones, and I'm going to set the, the type of curve to linear and the value to zero. So now we have a nice uh, flat curve. And uh, as you can see here, if we start going through, it actually kind of goes past it. And um, because these things up here, oops, if you select these, you'll see that the uh, the curve kind of goes past 100%. I don't want that because then th that's going to make the laser shoot past the object. So I'm going to select these uh, points at the top, set the curve to linear, and set the value to 100%. Now we have a nice flat curve, and I'm going to copy that because that's what we want for all the other channels. So edit the other channels and just go ahead and right click on the channel and paste and then edit and paste. And so now you'll see that we have it smoothly tracking. It shoots out and tracks and comes back. And uh, we could have it, we could have multiple constraints pointing to different objects at different times just by animating that uh, weight. And so as you can see here, we can move this object around and the laser will always stay with it. Okay. Oops, I'm just creating a bunch of keyframes here. But uh, as you can see, we don't have to retime the animation of the laser beam, which is if we did it by hand, we would have to do that. Let's load the original scene and you'll see also what I did was, let me bring this back. As you can see here, I also attached a light with a lens flare and a particle system, a hypervoxels particle system, to this bone. I, I just parented them to that. And then I just animated them. Now these ones I did do by hand. I animated the, uh, um, the particles coming out when I thought was appropriate. And I animated the, uh, the lens flare flaring uh, when I thought it should hit. But the actual animation of the uh, ships and stuff, as you can see, uh, that's all automated. So I hope that helps you out.